Hi everybody, it's Bevan Gaynor from the future. Uh, we just wanted to take a few moments to thank our supporters um, from Coffee for helping us so much. In particular, Daryl Walters from the Sail Cruising UK Facebook group, uh, Paul Johnson, Al from Perth, and in particular Liam Plumakers who kicked this whole thing off in the first place. You've been very supportive, thank you. Um, I have the honourable mentions and they go to John and Yvonne uh, from Wave Dancer. Gwen and Dave from Carrick, Roy the Sailing Sheriff. Thank you all very much and um, you're the people who help us make these videos. So thank you from me as well and uh, trust me the penguin says thank you too wherever she's got to. hoisted the uh, main sail. Um, I've got four of my telltales flying so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to do the traveller um, because I'm going to be close hauled. So I'm just bringing that across. That allows us to sail a bit closer to the wind uh -huh. and uh, I don't know why but my middle uh, telltale doesn't want to lift. I'll have to have a look at it, maybe it's twisted. But I've got about four of my telltales lifted so I'm happy with that. So now it's a case of uh, putting the Genoa out. <laughs> I have got it so close it's actually touching the oh that'll do yeah I've got it so close I've actually got it touching the shroud so I'm not going to get it much closer than that and then it's starting to tidy up the sails and hopefully we'll get into that sound that I love hopefully she says And it doesn't bother me one little bit that we're only doing three knots. That we're only doing three knots because we're sailing. And uh, if I wanted to go fast, I should have bought a uh, motorboat. Yeah, with one of them 300 horsepower engines on the back. Basically, yeah. You'd be bankrupt after your first trip. Yeah, I would actually, because uh, that's the thing with um, sailboats. Now I have, I'm using no uh, diesel or anything like that, and I'm still going around. And because we have the um, solar panels, that's uh, sufficient to power things like um, the autopilot. We've adjusted, Beverly uh, adjusted the kicker. Um, and that brings the front of the sail down um, and um, when after you'd in, um, pulled on that our speed increased by half a knot half a knot we got a lovely flat main sail look at it and that um, that telltale's flying now oh good the one that was uh, not flying uh, is now flying more worryingly we got the Isle of Lewis or whatever it is coming out behind us a big ferry oh that way. I was going to say. Behind Gainer, astern. That <laughs> way. Sorry. It's a big black and white thing, you can't miss it. I was thinking that we're in the wrong place for the Isle of Lewis, but the Isle of Lewis is actually a boat. <laughs> well, 
Well, while the galley slave is downstairs making cups of tea, I'm up here pinching as close as I can to the wind. Um, basically what I've done is I've taken the boat as close to the wind as I can without stalling the sails. And if they stall, I have to open out a little bit. It's called pinching up, or some people call it luffing up. Um, but the reason I'm doing it is because we can just... Oh, here's my tea coming. Lovely. We can just about make the entrance um, past Lismore Lighthouse um, on our current tack. So the more I can get slightly south, then the more manoeuvring room I have when I get up close to the, um, the uh, entrance to the sound. So it's a case of banking it early. Um, if a small deviation here over a longer distance will soon build up, whereas if I do this much closer in, I have to make a much, much larger course adjustment. So I'm more likely to get away with my pinching while I'm on this side, going that way, and I've got a couple of miles to make up the distance than if I get up close. So it's going to go as close as I can. But if we have to tack, we have to tack. Uh, but there's going to be no tacking for a while because it's tea break time, isn't it? Yep, absolutely. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Despite Beverly's best efforts to uh, pinch, we've decided to tack. And I can't believe it, I've videoed my tack and I've did exactly the same thing as I did when I did my jibe. In that my, um, one of my sheets wrapped round um, the forward cleat. Um, we have been told about some shoes, but I'm going to have to just remember before we get those little shoes, there's apparently things, something called cleat shoes to pull in the loop the other wire line basically because i had the um because you have a working sheet and you have um what's the other sheet love the lazy sheet the lazy sheet because i hadn't wrapped pulled in the lazy sheet that was the what when i was pulling it in uh making it the working sheet it wrapped around the cleat so oh a bit daft that's why we usually keep a turn around the winch to keep a little bit of tension on the line so it doesn't flap forward. Yeah, and also the fact that, um, you know, we keep the work, the lazy sheet reasonably tight. But I just hadn't done it and one well, little... it was easy fix. It was easy fix, but it's just... Even though I've been sailing for quite a while, I'm still making one or two odd mistakes. Nobody's perfect. And, um... That's true of everybody, so just try and be the best you can and uh, because isn't it perfection is the enemy of the good? Yes, perfect yeah, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Yeah, just be good enough. No, I don't have to be perfect. a lot better but that tack was um, to avoid the um, ferry now I have to be honest we were on a collision course and um, under Carl, Carl Regs <laughs> he should have given way to us but realistically <laughs> there's another one that says might is right <laughs> I don't think that's a call reg. It's not a call reg at all. 
But when it comes to a whopping great big ferry, they think they own the seas. They and do. <laughs> I just don't know if they, they own the seas, but they certainly um, they're there for commercial purposes, and whereas we're just here for pleasure. So uh, we tack to avoid it. But luckily, um, my tack this time was a lot better. <laughs> So, not too bad. Well, we're just at the bottom of uh, Lismore Point now, and um, we had another uh, vessel coming towards us. Um, fishing vessel was not on its AIS. Uh, which is a very annoying because um, AIS really really helps you uh, determine if you're going to crack uh, and because we are at the bottom of Lismore we didn't actually have any manoeuvrability room but luckily he has turned he is the give way vessel and uh, he has given way <sighs> well our speed over ground is uh, picking up because the current is drawing us through the passage here uh, we've got some overfalls up ahead of us the wind is not as strong as it was, um, so purely as a safety measure, I've got the engine in tick over. It's not actually turning the prop, but if these overfalls give us a bad time or they start turning the boat around and interfering with the, uh, the wind, then um, I'm ready to accelerate using the engine. But for now, I've taken the autopilot off and uh, we just have to see. We're now doing seven knots over ground. Plus we also have another book behind us and I want to have the ability to manoeuvre. Probably about another tenth of a mile of this. Mm. But I haven't needed the engine yet, which is good. Mm. And I'm hoping that I don't. Yeah, because we don't want to use the engine, but it's just useful uh, to have it there as standby. Um, especially when you've got races and overfalls like this. anchored in Loch Aileen um, and um, we've added put down the anchor marker now we don't normally put the anchor marker down um, but we decided that we would do uh, today for two reasons first of all uh, the bottom is a combination of mud and rock so if we unluckily uh, got the rock then we've at least got something that can trip the anchor and the other reason is that there's a couple of other yachts that are anchored near us and um, it's always a good idea when you've got other yachts around It'd be nice if they had trip markers It would be nice if they had trip markers as well but you know if there's going to be more people anchoring then knowing where the trip markers are it gives all the people an idea as to where the anchor is and uh, that's just useful information for other yachties 
not just yourself.